Hello everyone, it's Scott, and welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Valve Skyblock Expert Mode. I'm down again at the node area, and in between episodes I crafted the advanced node stabilizer. So, I had uh, everything uh, laid out in the middle of, actually the very beginning of last episode. Never got around to creating it, even though I had Aram, thanks to the, uh, the Wisps. So, uh... Right now, uh, I have, how much is that, 188 Aram. Yes. So I have more than enough to, to craft and to create more wisps and do all sorts of stuff. And so what I ended up doing is throwing it on the bright node. And I kept loading uh, nearby nodes uh, to it um, by plunking them down over here with the uh, teleposers. And uh, so I've been exploring quite a bit. So let's uh, grab a teleposer and throw it down uh, over, let's say, here. And load that up with the focus and throw myself in the middle of it. And uh, if I activate it, here I am way out almost... Uh, yeah, Z1100. So I'm now 1100 blocks away from my from my base, and uh, so I've just been kind of going out farther and farther, looking for uh, various. Um, yeah, let's go. So the next thing I need is an order node, hopefully an order and fire, and so just exploring out here. Things are getting pretty. Uh, Looks like I was here already. So, order and water. Alright, so here's a good candidate. So, it's got uh, 87 ordo. So, let's throw that in there. Let's grab one of the teleposition, right click, and figure out where I am. I'm a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty far away from my base. So, which way? Okay, so this will bring me back towards. Uh, Bring it back towards my base, so let's keep going this way. Sorry about that, I ended up losing my base. <laughs> this just flew off into the middle of the darkness. So let's load that one up into the teleposer and flick the switch. Bink! And there's that uh, large order node to be absorbed by the, uh, by the existing order node. So, aura node. So, I'm just going to let this guy grow and uh, check back later. The uh, Fabricator is um, up to quite a bit of Mox Fuel. I ended up taking uh, 18 of them and turning them back into Quad uh, Fuel Rods. And then I had a problem where, as I've been crafting the uh, Ultimate Hybrid Solar Panels, I'm up to 6 so far um yeah i uh, started running out of energy at my base so uh, i completely drained my uh, capacitors uh, both both sets uh, 105 million uh, <laughs> yeah 105 million and 24 million done uh so i think that all of these are just completely overpowered here um yeah so they're sucking all the energy out in order to uh, keep the scrap box up and going. The um, it's uh, yeah, you can see here, probably producing about a UU matter a second at this point, um, which is pretty good. Uh, but as I said, uh, I'm on the verge of running out of power at the base. So, so to get around the RF power problems in my base, I'm looking to craft the ultimate solar panel. Not only because it gets me a trophy, but because it can produce 32,000 RF per tick per solar panel. So, uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, so, I've been kind of prepping a number of the formulas here. I have all the cores uh, for each of the uh, various flavors of a solar panel. So, and uh, so here I've crafted the, all the formulas for the leadstone as well as the hardened solar panel. So, Let's uh, whip up one of those, 
And I think this is going to start getting crazy very rapidly um, as it uh, works through. So I'm going to just kind of build up, yeah, hardened solar panel. So uh, let's find that in the list. And a hardened solar panel makes the redstone solar panel. So I can, I can just go through and, and one by one load these guys in until I get to the point that the ME system can just build all the way up to the ultimate solar panel. Bink, bink, bink. Okay, so these are going to start to get very expensive very quickly. And I'll cut into that uh, shortly uh, once I'm further along. All right, so this is not going to work because I got all the way up to the resonant solar panel, which is uh, two steps away. I need to go from resonant to advanced solar panel, up, and then finally the ultimate solar panel. Unfortunately, the next step, the resonant, the well, yeah, the advanced solar panel, just doing one of them, is going to require a thousand steel, refined iron. Not only that, it's going to require a lot more endurium. It's going to require 7,000 electrotine. Uh, and that's just to get one of the nine that I need. In fact, let's just, uh, yeah, let's um, say, what if I got all eight? Yeah, I'm um, missing sand. I, even 24,000 iron is not enough. I need another 13,000, uh, basically of almost everything so um what i'm going to need to do 93,000 electro team and i have three for the entire time i've been playing i have 3,000 electro team left so i'm gonna have to up my game like i don't know quadruple quintuple i don't know um maybe a factor of 100 here uh, i need a better uh sifting and uh grinding uh layout than what I'm working on right now. So the uh, uh, the sieve, I think, is, is still the best uh, approach here. Um, I'm probably going to need to make like 10 of them. Uh, and then the, uh, the counterparty uh, to this um, with the X asterisk is um, the automatic hammer, which is... Uh, uh, I think one of the fastest hammers, the, the ones that can split the uh, blocks into um, uh, sand or gravel, sand, and dust. And um, yeah, so I'm going to have to work on that. I did make this flux infused hammer, but it doesn't seem to be uh, helping me that much. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to have to spend a little time setting up more uh, cobble generators, uh, more. Uh, crushers, etc., 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 until I get uh, at least some kind of production rate that I could even hope to get 100,000 pieces of iron. <laughs> okay, and while that was going on, uh, the fabricator, I ended up switching back to iridium ore, so uh, I have a bit more of MOX nuclear fuel, which is fine. Uh, this is now blipping along probably about uh, one every three quarters of a second, as you can see. Um, so it's actually producing iridium pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and it's also maxing out my, my RF demands in the base. So it turns out that I was able to shut down this, the molecular transformer. So, uh, I forgot that I had kind of set it up with, uh, scenarium. And so I actually have 630 scenarium here, um, that, uh, <laughs> is, uh, just waiting to be used for uh, ultimate hybrid solar panels. Um, but uh, yeah, so that freed up probably about 3,000 um, spare RF a tick. And uh, yeah, so I am back up to full capacitor banks uh, without even, um, yeah, without even having to really expand the, um, the, uh, Enervation dynamos down here. Now I did set up uh, this, the emery interface. I set up the the cryocell flux amplifier, which is the 
switches from a four times to an eight times. So basically doubles the power production of each one of these innervation dynamos. So I've been slowly adding them to the mix here to kind of uh, amp up the uh, output of each one of these. And so I'm about halfway, probably a quarter of the whole total uh, innervation dynamo or upgraded to the eight times multiplier. Um, so that's something I can do also in my spare time. Uh, it's pretty boring watching me just go back and forth and, and fill that in. Um, down here, the nodes seem to be working okay. Uh, it's slowly absorbing uh, uh, V from each of the nodes. Uh, my old node seems to be uh, working okay. And this guy is still just an absolute beast. Um, yeah, so it's growing. Now, uh, once I energize it, I think I remember that it's a, a divide by eight. So I need to have multiples of eight uh, to uh, equate to one centivy of uh, recharge capability once it's energized. So I want to get that Ignis up to at least 24 and the order out of 24. So I at least can have a multiple uh, to, uh, to uh, get that working. Um, the other thing I might do is I... I kind of noticed that I am running out of chunks. So I'm at 40. I ended up uh, pruning out a couple of, uh, of the things around the base. Um, I had uh, I hit my 50 out of 50 loaded chunks and realized that I had a lot of stuff that really didn't need to be chunk loaded. And I could probably even drop this whole bottom row here because there's not much that needs to be. Um, this is just part of the farm complex. Uh, so I could actually, uh, yeah, even drop these by right-clicking and uh, reselecting um, that I own this property. Um, yeah, so that'll bring me back to 38 loaded chunks. So that gives me a little breathing room for setting up, say, a uh, something in the Nether. Or I've been looking around that there's two other uh, warps, of course, over here, Portal to the Deep Dark. So uh, this is something that looks actually like it's cut off. Okay. Um, yeah, so it might be a skyblock thing because uh, going to the deep dark is pretty, uh, it's like infinite resources. Let, let's just be honest. Uh, so uh, it might be too cheesy for, for uh, FTB Infinity Evolve skyblock. Okay, so the other portal that's brought in through extra, extra utilities is this portal to the last millennium. And... Uh, Unfortunately, it's like another skyblock. It's a completely empty dimension except for a single platform. Uh, the downside is it's permanently night there. So things like solar uh, panels are not going to work. Um, though that might be a good spot possibly to place the uh, UU Matter production. But unfortunately, UU Matter works best now with the solar panels. So I'm going to have to come up with another solution for that. But looks like it's just uh, you know, burnt quartz and this eminent stone, which is actually going to be pretty easy, just purple and ender pearls and so on and so forth. So, um, so if any of you uh, want to try having an extra dimension out there somewhere, uh, it might be um, a good thing for you. But in this case, I don't think it's going to work for me. Um, so let's uh, check in on what I can do next. Okay, I've kind of laid out the next line of attack here of things that I need to do. So, uh, first off, I'm going to let those nodes downstairs combine into a master node. Then I'm going to work on energizing them and then hooking them up to the ME system. And with that, I'm going to have enough V to start making primal charms. With the primal charms, I'll be able to make the Thaumium embossed Silverwood Scepter, which is a a prerequisite for making the arcane assembler, which is something I'm going to need in order to use uh, the ME system to autocraft Thaumcraft uh, components. So, why do I need that? Because I need a lot of stuff to make reinforced obsidian, which I'm going to need to make the wither farm. So, I'm almost at the point where I can do that uh, if we go to reinforced obsidian uh, right now. Uh, these might be two separate paths because uh, crushed obsidian is not a problem. Um, 
The reinforced stone, however, is. And that's what I demonstrated, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 episodes ago now, uh, which I used the construction foam in order to uh, get the reinforced stone. So uh, I'm probably just going to go back and uh, and I ended up getting the uh, construction foam sprayer. I have another uh, 26 iron scaffolds. Unfortunately, I, I kind of... Um, uh, reinforce. I, I, pre I prepped out the formula here. Uh, I think I'm going to need about 60 blocks, I think, to do this right. Um, though I could, I could make it tighter, but with 60, I really just need another 27 reinforced stone, which puts me in the ballpark of what I already have. So uh, all I really need to do is lay out the scaffolding and just hit it all up with the sprayer and then come back and, well, gather it up. So let's um, take care of that. Can I... Oh, is, is it going to be cranky about that? Let's get a uh, slab. I think it can only initially be placed on... Yep, there we go. So I can hook it to itself, but not to um, just a dangly space. So there we go. And it doesn't want to come across. I don't know why. Okay. So let's just do that. Let's set up. Maybe I need to drop another stone down. Maybe. Okay. I guess that was it. So let's do that and just hit this up with the foam. Blip. And blip. Okay. So I dropped six of them. Um... And one more. There we go. Okay, so I can wait for this to dry, or I can just hit it up with sand. So let's grab a chunk of sand and go through this. Unfortunately, it's going to take a long time for me to uh, mine it, which is why I'm considering going and upgrading my, my pick. Uh, so uh, what I ended up doing was setting up a, a grinding area downstairs. And um, so I was looking into cobalt. And here we go, cobalt. And as you can see here, I have, through x uh broken cobalt ore. So let's grab that. So all of the nether ores here, uh, are coming from crushed netherrack through a sieve. And so I can get cobalt ore, draconium ore, ardite ore, and mithril. I can't figure out what to do with mithril, but uh, draconium, cobalt, and ardite are what I'm going to need to make the manulin, which uh, I think is still the highest level of uh, mining uh, capability. So um, I'm going to try to piece together a manulin pickaxe uh, and that should help me grind through all this, uh, all this uh, reinforced obsidian. And uh, the other thing I was doing was um, over here. I was I set up a formula for uh, going through uh, crushed uh, endstone. So I got that by pulverizing endstone, which I got by dropping uh, glowstone into my lava buckets, and I. I almost drained my entire lava store, uh, unfortunately. And so that gets me more draconium ore and more platinum ore. And so I ended up, if I can find it, draconium. Uh, so I have 253 draconium and 634 uh, draconium dust. So that worked out extremely well here. Um, so all I need to do next is, well, start crafting with it. So that's going to be some more end game stuff than I that I have right now. Uh, some of these uh, draconium uh, awaken cores. Um, yeah, I'm not quite. I, I crafted the uh, evolution uh, draconic evolution tablet, and that's laid out a, a couple of things uh, for me. Um, though I'm I'm going to have to take some baby steps here because it looks like a, a couple of the formulas have changed. Um, yeah, redstone into the wyvern core. The wyvern core is going to be 
the alloy, electrum, mana steel, and thomium, all of which I can make today, except that I'm really lacking a nether star. So that's kind of why I'm focusing on getting a wither farm up and running. So uh, let me see if I can do some quick cuts to uh, put together a thomium pick, or I'm sorry, a manulin pick to uh, work through all this stone. So I ended up just being lazy about it and using my steel pickaxe to mine the uh, reinforced uh, stone for the uh, for what I needed. So um, reinforced. Uh, I ended up with the yeah, 59 blocks. So let's make um, 50 of the reinforced obsidian. Bam. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a um, oh, okay I'm gonna set up some space in the nether I think to be the wither farm um, so what I'm gonna do it looks like I'm running out of uh, let's see uh, ender pearls so let's do 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 and plug them in right here to melt them down so that'll uh, free up for uh, to make another resonant ender bucket which will be the last thing I need in order to craft another tesseract so probably by the time I fly over there uh, this will be done so let's head over to the gate and grab all my stuff so I'm gonna need the reinforced uh, obsidian so this is also delayed waiting on the, the crushed obsidian okay uh, I'm going to need the Tesseract. Got it. And let's uh, let's set up another quantum gate on the other side. All right, here I am in the Nether, and what I'm going to do is use the F9 key to lay out all of the chunks. So uh, what I'm going to do is pick, I guess, this chunk over here, which is close enough to my to my gate, but not too distant. So what I'm going to do is throw down the angel block from extra utilities. So angel block. And so this allows you to just kind of, it's a very simple formula, uh, uh, gold and obsidian and, and feathers. And what it allows you to do is just right click and let's hit F9 one more time. Uh, so I can just right click and it'll place the block down without having to have another anchor point. Uh, attached to it. So that's extremely valuable for um, for skyblocks. And so what I'm going to do then is set up, uh, let's make the quantum ring hang off of this. Okay. And another quantum link chamber in the center, followed by the entangled singularity in, in here. So I'm going to need yet another energy acceptor. So let's place it here, followed by the Tesseract, and hook that up to power line. Excellent. So there we go. Energize. So now I should be able... Ouch. Um, okay. There we go. So I should be able then to go to my inventory, go to claim chunks, and let's see, control shift left, yeah, control left click will now force this to be a chunk loaded block. Excellent. So everything in here will now always remain active, which is pretty good, I think. So let's head back to the overworld and collect our uh, reinforced obsidian. All right, I'm back and I grabbed a few more things. So I have a, a dense cable now. So let's plug that in here. And I also crafted up a quick ME wireless access point. And so if I plug this back into the, uh, let's give it a second to find its channel. There we go, device online. So if I plug this into the quantum quantum ring, through uh, any kind of cable, uh, it's going to act 
just like it does in the overworld where I can basically uh, use my wireless uh, universal terminal from that dimension. So I am in the nether hooked up to my overworld inventory and that's pretty cool and not only that uh, thanks to these boosters I now have a 46 block range which should be enough more than enough for what I need to do here in the nether. So um, next steps uh, what I need to do is start setting up uh, the uh, the placement of the uh, of the cage, let's say, of the of what I'm going to be trapping the um, the wither inside. So let's work out to about here, and I want to make sure that I'm a little bit away from the uh, from the actual electronics. So let's set this up, move down a little. Good. Uh, and so let's start placing some block placers. So these are going to set up the uh, uh, the shape of the uh, of the wither's body. So one, two, three, four for the soul sand, and then three across the top with the uh, wither skeleton skulls. Excellent. And so that's going to place, oops, <laughs> I'm facing the wrong way. So let's uh, gather all that up and shift it around to the other side. All right, so let's start laying out the wither's body. So uh, with the open box block placers, the same stuff that I was using for uh, the Batania automation, I'm going to lay out the four blocks for the soul sand, the three for the wither skeleton skulls, and... That should place the items off here to the right, as long as they're loaded in from the back. So, uh, what I'll do then is I'm going to set up this reinforced obsidian like such. So, um, each one of the so the the wither will basically be built here. Um, let's say here and. What it's going to do is, in its initial phase, it's going to want to fall. So, what we'll do is we'll set up a little bit of headroom here. Whoops! I'm being attacked by a ghast. Where are you? All right, that's fixed. So let's let's work out how to enclose the wither then. So it's going to start out being one block wide. And then it's going to want to fall. So I'm going to set up a little bit of a chamber here for it to drop uh, after the initial uh, creation of the wither. So let's have it drop a couple feet, I guess. Okay, I think this should be good to get it away from the... Um, the block placing equipment. So, okay. At that point, I'm going to start setting up. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough, unfortunately. Uh, so, I'm going to have to go back and make a bunch more reinforced uh, stone. Yep, so I don't even have enough for the floor at this point. So um, why don't I do that, and I will be right back where I left off here. All right, I'm back, and I ended up crafting a cobalt pickaxe with a 14 mining speed compared to manulin, which uh, I think topped out at 9. Uh, let's... Uh, Manulin pickaxes, yes, has a mining speed of 9. So I ended up just going with that just so I could, <laughs> well, get the material faster. So uh, this should be crafting right now. Okay, it's crushing the obsidian again. So uh, let's grab what is crafted. 
out of the ME system and try to piece together the, the concept at least. So uh, the wither is going to fall down and what I'm going to do is set up a uh, a fan network over here to basically blow the wither in this direction to the left. And so um, I seem to have misplaced my cobble. So let's grab a little bit of that and throw these back in. And what I'll do is set up a, a little platform, I guess about this far away. So it's insulated from any kind of uh, creeper blast. Well, of course it would be because of the reinforced stone. So let's set up the fans here. So bink, bink, bink. And we'll need some levers. So grab three of these from when we're ready to turn it on. One, two, three. And on the receiving end, I'm going to set up the killer Joe. So let's do that. Grab the rest of the reinforced obsidian and grab the killer Joe out of the ME system. Okay. So the killer Joe will be placed about here. Yep, facing inwards with ouch with the sword. Okay. So that'll be good. So let's place another piece here. And grab the remaining uh, blocks. Okay, so I'm going to set this up as four tall uh, because the wither is actually uh, three and a half uh, blocks tall. And did I just run out again? I ran out again. Okay, luckily the last eight just rolled in. Okay, so I'll seal that in. And so what should happen is that the wither will form, fall down here, and get whacked by the sword, all the while being blown backwards by the fan where it'll be collected out here in the back and I'll set up some uh, I'll set up a uh, transfer node. So let's give this a shot. Um, I think oh you know what this is going to require a redstone pulse in order to activate if I recall. So let's see if I can set up some uh, red net cable. Do I have um, I have red pipe wire, but yeah, red net cable is going to be a lot easier. Um, do I have any plastic? Uh, I do. Okay, so plastic sheets. I'm going to need at least uh, 12. So let's make up another batch. Okay, and. So for that, I'm going to whip out the crafting table over here that I brought along. So just as the uh, wireless access point will work uh, remotely. So let's set this up. Bing. And as soon as it finds its channel, uh, we should be uh, good to go. As soon as, uh, what's killing me now? Another bat. All right, so let's grab this. Let's make ourselves the uh, red net uh, cable. Okay. And hook all this together. All right, what is killing me? All right, and for the last piece, I'll need uh, something that'll activate. So uh, what better than the uh, hourglass? Well, I, didn't, uh, I don't have that, so 
uh, let's think about this for a sec. So uh, in the meantime, let's get a lever just to test. Ah, I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to need more than just the redneck cable. I'm going to need... Um, there we go. I'm going to need um, something a little fancier, I think. I'm going to need uh, something that can carry both uh, redstone and uh, items in order to drop the right items into these respective uh, uh, block pieces. Okay, I just want to demo this quick. It's the Flux Infused Pickaxe, which is actually a pretty easy uh, pickaxe to make. Uh, it's just a couple pieces of uh, Flux Electrum ingot, plus this Flux influ Infused uh, Rod, which is this crystals, and the Obsidian Rod, which is just uh, really easy to make. And I ended up putting a Efficiency 5 on it. And so that, with the uh, Flux uh upgrade the uh, if i hit the v key it gives a little extra uh boost to be rf powered um so i'm going to be able to just rip through this uh reinforced stone finally whoops and uh so i have a couple more uh spots that i just want to lay out here and yep so let me harvest all of this uh and i will head back to the nether Okay, I just stopped back in the uh, in the overworld, and uh, where is my Diabolist fork? Here it is. So I'm being attacked by an Elder Guardian, or uh, yeah, Elder's Guardian. So I'm gonna kill him with the with with the uh, imprinting crystal here. Yep, and there we go. Okay, so. I have an imprinted crystal now of an Elder's Guardian, which is awesome because that's going to save me so much time. Oh, that's it? One? Oh, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, well, let's safeguard that guy and put it in the uh, in the ME system for now. Uh, yeah, I had trouble talking there. There's just too much going on all of a sudden. It's like, oh my gosh, Something that's going to save me an incredible amount of time hunting and looking for taint and all that kind of nonsense later uh, just kind of popped out of me. Uh, okay, so let's look for... Um, what I need to do is send a redstone pulse to, uh, to those uh, block placing blocks as well as feed them with items. So the only way that I know, and there might be other uh, other sources, but... I'm going to try using the Ender IO conduit, which I can combine a redstone circuit with a uh, item conduit, if I can find it here, item conduit. And uh, so I need to be able to place those um, basically three Ender skull or three Wither skulls and uh, five Soul Sand. So I really need two independent channels, uh, but. Um, at least seven, probably uh, upwards of 12 blocks, I think. So um, I ended up making um, a little bit of prep for this. So I did make uh, a uh, 20 servos. I made some conduit binders. I made uh, warp uh, item ducts here. Uh, yep, 30 of them. So uh, let's make the formula for the item conduit and uh, throw that into the uh, into the ME system here. I ended up hooking up yet another uh, uh, block of eight uh, molecular assemblers. So uh, right over there, there's another uh, stack of them. Uh, so let's also make the uh, redstone uh, uh, conduit here. So uh, looks like uh, I got two pieces. I'm not sure what the insulated does, but uh, let's stick with this guy. Um, so, redstone alloy is uh, going to be another uh, tricky thing. It's just going to be um, uh, silicon and redstone together in a smelter. So, let's uh, grab that formula and great. That's going to be exactly what I need. So, um, yep, so let's feed that in here. 
and make our conduit. So let's, uh, I don't know, at least make 10 of these. Okay, that made 16. Let's make 10 of these. Okay, 12. Excellent. So let's also grab a couple of chests and uh, make sure I grab some uh, soul sand. So uh, I did pause the soul sand production. It looks like I might have to run it up again. Uh, and then the uh, wither skeleton. Oh, I only have 75. Uh, okay. So that's not a great amount of skulls. Um, so, uh, you know what? I might be limited by the number of, of skulls. So I'm not going to have to worry about the soul sand, I don't think. Um, so let's... Um, grab a little bit of filler too so uh, let's grab some uh, of our 17,000 melons and head back to the nether okay so the way this is going to work is I'm going to wire this up by right clicking on the block placers and kind of uh, lay out the uh, the diagram here and so when these are uh, energized with the uh, redstone pulse. They're going to immediately um, uh, place their items out to the uh, to this output side here. So what I'm going to have to do then is work with the wrench. And if I recall, uh, I need to. Hmm, are these hooking up in any way? Uh, I don't recall if they are. Um, okay, well, that's good at least. So the, the block placer will uh, connect to the item conduit. So I'm not sure if the item conduit is uh, going to be um, basically talking to the... Uh, if the uh, redstone conduit is going to be talking to the, uh, to the block placer. So let's at least... Uh, Item conduit connection to the west. Hmm. Okay, well. Yeah, let's lay that out like so. Um, I'm going to need something to trigger a redstone pulse. Let's make a hourglass um, and hook it up here. Okay, so I really don't know if, those, if these are going to talk to each other or not. So uh, let's... grab, I don't know, at least a couple pieces of sand here and see if this is able to, to fire the, um, to trigger this in any way. So let's put in a little bit of sand here in the top. And when this runs down, I don't know if that's going to actually work. Oh, okay. So that blipped and it looks like it did place a piece of sand. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, so what we can do next then is let's put... Okay, let's figure out my mouse problem first of all. So I'm being attacked by a fire bat. That's done. Okay, now I'm back in control. Let's disconnect these. Uh, correction, okay. All right, so what I want to do next is separate the top three from the bottom. So I'm just going to right-click on these uh, item pipes to kind of separate. So I have an upper branch and a lower branch. So let's bring out the, uh, the chests here. So uh, let's grab those and place that here. And let's... Um, Shift right click, get rid of that guy, and hook up a chest over here. So uh, if I can do this right, this is going to extract from the chest. And if I were to place a soul, a uh, skeleton in here, one of the uh, skeleton skulls, and why is everything killing me? All right, so now that that's done, uh, right click on the item conduit. Okay, so... What I wanted to do is extract, uh, let's get rid of the uh, always active. Uh, we're going to have that then pipe into 
Uh, let's see, weather skeleton skulls are going to insert over here. So I need to uh, right click, put it into insert mode, right click, insert mode, right click, insert mode. Okay. So now it should see a path. It should pull those guys out uh, and it's loading up. Uh, yeah, put all three, I think, over here, or at least it's it's going to. Um, so let's, oh, I see what they did, uh, it placed them. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting close. So let's take that out. Let's um, make sure I put plenty of soul sand into these uh, blocks. And let's start using the filler here to kind of um, uh, block everything because you cannot right click and place melons. And uh, so let's do that. And that, and that, and I'm going to have to set up all these to insert again. There we go. That'll that'll work. Okay, so this is now filling, 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 and not filling. So let's make sure I grab some of that and place it over here. Okay, good. I guess it started filling it up already. So let's grab a lot more soul sand. In fact, that's all my soul sand. So let's put it back in here. And that'll fill up each of these to 64. And eventually, the, uh, the block will tick, and it will form the um, it'll form the uh, the bottom cross that I need for the uh, for the wither. Let's protect myself a little bit more here. Okay, so hopefully I can now trigger the. Um, okay, let's look at the killer Joe. How much? Uh, we have plenty of nutrients. So I'll have to wire that up to the fluid uh, feed soon. But let's put in. One wither skeleton skull and one wither skeleton skull. And that should be everything we need to form the wither. There we go. Okay, it's forming and it's falling. And what should happen then is it should get blown off to the right towards the back of the, uh, of the channel where it is being attacked by the killer Joe. Excellent. So uh, I think because I'm in range, it's trying to kill me. So it's uh, getting attacked right now, but the reinforced. Oh dear. Okay, guess what? The uh, block placers much too close. Um, that's unfortunate. All right, I'm gonna have to wait till the wither is killed. Uh, then I'll come back and uh, and fix the drop channel. Okay, there we go. The weather is killed, and this transfer node should, uh, since it's filled with world interaction upgrades, should extract all the drops here. So here we have a heart, another star, and another division sigil. Excellent. So let me clean up this mess and relocate everything probably about, uh, yeah, probably about five blocks up. All right, let's try this again. So we'll load up one of the wither skeleton skulls into the center channel. There is our wither and a couple more uh, wisps to kind of get in the way here. Okay, so the wither is going to fall all the way down. Yep, there we go. So now we're safely out of range of the block placers. And now it's being hit here by the uh, killer Joe. Uh, I ended up wiring up a, uh, and it killed my killer Joe. Okay, what happened? That wasn't supposed to happen. All right, there we go. So I ended up putting the killer Joe back. Um, I may end up flipping the direction of the uh, fans to actually blow it away from the killer Joe. Uh, because for some reason I thought that this block was invulnerable 
but uh, maybe I need to look into uh, the Thomcraft uh, reinforcement. Um, uh, yeah, so, or I need to have the fans blow to the left, so the, the blast radius of the wither is away from the, uh, that block. But in any case, um, what I can do is just, uh, kind of queue up, um, yep, so I'm up to three nether stars. Excellent. Uh, so I can just, uh, load up. I will be happy to be gone from the nether because of all these critters are just driving me bonkers. There we go. Um, so let's take all the all the uh, wither skeleton skulls and load them up. Okay. So 23. Excellent. So I should be able to make 23 more uh, withers. So... Let's place that and get the heck out of here. Nope, I'm back because I made a mistake. And I do not want to just load all these up because I'm going to end up spawning more than one wither. So let's get out of here and head back to the overworld and see if... Uh, Everything's okay. Yep, it broke my Killer Joe again. All right, so it looks like the design is not quite working as expected. Let me do a couple more edits, and I'll be right back. All right, here is the completed Wither Farm. So I've loaded up with uh, extra Wither Skeleton Skulls. Uh, the timer is set currently to 60 seconds. Uh, what's going to happen is the placers will create the wither, it'll drop down. It turns out the Killer Joe can attack through walls. And that, I think, was what I was missing. So I ended up building, building a solid wall here, so that way the blast cannot break the uh, Killer Joe. Uh, so I ended up shorting this to just uh, three deep, so the, the uh, fans are on and active and blowing the uh, wither against the back wall. Um, where it's trapped so it cannot go back up the channel. Uh, the Killer Joe is then whacking it, and then when it's done, the, uh, the transfer node will collect the items, place them in here, and they will all get sucked into the ME system. And that is how we're going to loop and basically kill the Wither over and over in the nether dimension, where it's not going to create me any lag. So, ah, uh, with that, <laughs> I'm going to call this thing an episode. So it was a very long slog just to get this to work. I just feel like all I did all episode was run back and forth between the overworld and the nether. And uh, I'm just glad it's done. So um, if you could, please leave a comment or a like and uh, let me know how I'm doing. And I will see you next time in Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock Expert Mode. Bye!